Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Vice Squad, the series where I find yesterday's forgotten work-holding devices and drag them into the modern shop. And today, I've got a special treat. This is the Lake Erie Toolworks standard wooden vice screw. It is 24 inches of bone dry rock maple, two and three quarter inches in diameter, and precision threaded at an absurd two threads per inch. Why is it made of wood, you ask? Because that's how they did it back in the day. And because a metal version of this screw would be too heavy to lift. In fact, the only thing heftier than the screw itself is the price tag. I paid $175 for this thing. And if that weren't bad enough, I need two of them. Today, I'm making the wooden twin screw vise. Now, it's easy to confuse this vise with the popular Moxon vise, but this is really a different thing. This is a portable, detachable vise that you take out and put on your bench for doing specialty joinery tasks, like dovetails, and then you take it off again. The twin screw vise is a different thing. It is big enough and sturdy enough, and it is built right into the bench so it can handle every woodworking operation. At least, that's what I've read. I've never actually used one. All the books agree that these vices were big and beefy, so this project demands a thick hardwood jaw. I'm using this piece of reclaimed tulip wood. It's a heavy and dense species. Up until a few years ago, this piece was supporting heavy machinery as part of a factory floor, so it's perfect for this project. I use an aggressive saw to quickly get the piece down to size, but that leaves a rough surface. Luckily, my advanced shooting board is designed to handle big, long timbers, and you can use it with pretty much any plane, even a weird antique like this one. I've got plans and a video if you'd like to build one. As big as it is, this plank is still too narrow to handle these enormous screws, so I add a strip of white oak along the bottom and leave it to dry. But wait a second, why am I even building this thing? Well, it's mostly because of the dominies. They were a family of early American craftsmen, and if I'm honest, I'm a little bit obsessed with them. The Dominies were way more than woodworkers. They were a dynasty of craftsmen that practiced a huge range of crafts across three generations, spanning more than a hundred years of the golden age of American handwork. Of course, they built furniture, but the Dominies were also carpenters, surveyors, farmers, cabinet makers, gunsmiths, metalsmiths, and clockmakers. Think about that. These guys built complete clocks from scratch by hand. I mean, that was pretty much the only way to build a clock in the 18th century, but still, it's impressive. These were master craftsmen. They could have had any vice they wanted to, but on the three benches in the Domini shop, every single one of them has a big twin screw vice built in, and I want to know why. The Dominies took a lot of pride in their tools and built everything to a high standard. And I want to follow in that tradition. So when I go to make the ends for my vice handles, I'm putting some pieces of highly figured black walnut on the lathe and turning a neat cylinder with a wide chamfer on the outside edge for comfort. The Dominies were master turners with at least three lathes in their shop, so they would have done work like this every day. I'd like to get a fast finish on these ends, so I'm trying out this sanding paste made by the channel Brad's Workbench. It's just a fine abrasive in paste form, and it lets me quickly take out some of my final sanding scratches and get the surface prepped for a finish. Brad also makes this finishing product he calls Tongue Wax, which is pure tongue oil that's somehow made into a wax. Honestly, I have no idea what's going on here, but I smear this goop on, turn on the lathe, crank it up to a high speed, and buff it out. The final finish really does look great, and it was quick. I don't get anything if you buy some of this stuff, but Brad is a buddy of mine, and this stuff actually works, and he is hand-making it in his kitchen. I'm sure his wife is delighted about that. I will leave a link down in the description. Of course, once this thing is done, I'm going to need somewhere to put it. So my old cast iron vise on my big workbench needs to go. This is actually a weird moment for me. This is the first woodworking vise I ever owned, and I thought it would be the last one I ever needed. But it hasn't worked out that way. There's a whole world of vices out there, and it turns out this beautiful, vintage one that I spent months tracking down and paid good money for and very carefully restored, well, it might not be that great. Now that it's off the bench, I'm not sure it's ever going back on again. Now, 
A twin screw vise works a lot better on a bench with an apron, but you'd be surprised how often you can just add an apron to an existing bench. This is just construction grade 2x10, and all I have to do is screw it to the legs and the top, plane the top edge flush, and trim off the extra length. Carefully. Honestly, this old bench was getting pretty wobbly anyway. Five screws and a chunk of construction lumber really tighten things up, and I can get under there with one of these wooden nuts and trace its position. Then the apron comes back off, and I can use the nut to trace the hole location, and use a compass to widen it up into a clearance hole. Once you have one location, you can measure over and lay out the other one. It really pays to take your time here. Between the nuts, the apron holes, and the holes in the jaw, you've got a lot of things that need to line up. Once you're sure of the layout, you can drill a hole and thread the blade of a turning saw right through. This is my DIY turning saw, and it's made to handle much tighter curves than this one. Running around this big circle is fast and easy, and the waste pops right out. Now, the build is going fine, but I'm here to solve a mystery. It's not totally clear why the Dominies were even using this vise. I mean, the twin screw is not a modern design. In fact, it's pretty ancient and pretty simplistic. You're probably used to modern vices with quick release, but the twin screw is especially slow because you have to turn each screw independently. But it's even worse than that because the original twin screw vices didn't even have a garter. That's the part that pulls the jaw open when you back off the screw. The Dominies had to manually pull the jaw open every time they loosened the screws. It seems prehistoric. Now, I know what you're thinking. These were rural carpenters working in a backwoods part of Long Island hundreds of years ago. They just didn't know any better. And that would make sense, except it's not true. The Dominies were educated, literate people. They owned books, they ran for public office, they wrote editorials in the local newspaper. These people knew all sorts of stuff. They definitely knew about modern European benches with multiple vices and complicated work holding. With their skills, the Dominies could have easily built one of these complex Scandinavian benches. But they didn't. And it gets even more interesting. Let's go back and look at that Dominie bench again. See that slot in the bottom of the leg? You know what that's for? A leg vise. Not unlike the one I've got here except theirs would have had the traditional pegboard going through the leg. This isn't just me speculating either. Historians agree that two out of the three Dominie benches originally had leg vices. And at some point, they pulled them off and switched over to twin screws on all three benches. Now, I love my leg vise. It is the best vise I have ever used. But the Dominies abandoned the leg vise for the twin screw, which seems so much clunkier and more difficult. I have to know why they did that. Guess I better finish building the thing. The nuts that come with the Lake Erie screws are nice and thick, but that makes mounting them difficult. So I bore a deep countersink into each corner and drill through for my fasteners. Then I can install the nuts with long screws, sandwich everything together, and transfer the whole locations. Then all I have to do is cut out my final holes on the hardwood jaw and do a little cleanup with rasps and sandpaper. You need these holes to be big enough for the screws to pass through, but not so huge that the hubs on the screw can't grip the jaw. It's better to make them a little small and then widen them gradually. A little bit of scrap leather glued to the inside of the jaws makes every vise work better, and it only takes a few minutes. Then it's just a matter of assembling it, threading in the screws, adding the handles, and, well, getting to know the damn thing. So how's it work? Well, there's definitely some fiddling around to keep the jaw parallel and get it tightened down. No doubt, you'd get used to this if you worked with this vise every day, but it takes a minute. Once I do have a piece of wood in the vise, the hold is astonishing. Most wooden vices have a single screw and use some kind of leverage to apply force. Those designs are fast, but they do waste some clamping power. The twin screw is not like this. In fact, I can move the whole bench around by pulling on this piece of wood. This is my big bench, loaded with tools, and it weighs over 200 pounds. The wood in the vise doesn't even budge. And that's very nice, but what about capacity? I suspect that this is mostly a cabinet maker's vise, so it needs to hold wide pieces of wood straight up and down for joinery. I built mine with 21 inches between the screws, so I can drop a really wide board right in there 
and dovetail the whole end. In this case, that would be absurd because of the giant knot in the middle of the board, but you get the idea. For edge work, the twin screw is actually really convenient. With two screws, you can just lay a board across them while you get the jaw tightened. Wood screws don't need any grease or oil, so your work stays clean. And the hold on this thing is so ridiculous that I don't think you'll even need pegs or holdfasts in the apron to hold the far end of a long board. If you're planing something six feet or less, you're all set. Even without a garter, the jaw on my vise generally just opens when I release the screws, but occasionally you do have to give it a quick tug to get it open. It's really not a big deal. The other big advantage to twin screws and a loose jaw is that the vise easily adapts to tapered work. You'd have no problem gripping some pretty weird shapes with a vise like this. So I went into this build with two assumptions. I thought this vise was going to be easy to build, and I thought I was going to love it. And in fact, neither of those things is true. It turns out the vise is actually surprisingly difficult to build and get everything lined up and make it work. And then now that I've got it done, I find it clumsy and difficult and weird. Honestly, I mean, it, it doesn't really compare to my angled leg vise, which has a, a sort of similar capacity and holds things really well and holds boards up and down. I mean, the twin screw has more hold and it definitely holds some bigger pieces more easily, but you pay for that in speed and convenience and you need two screws. I, I have to be honest, I don't really get it. Now, there are modern companies like Veritas that make a chain drive twin screw. So when you turn one of the handles, the other handle turns automatically. You get all the benefits, all that capacity and grip and straight up and down holding, but without having to fiddle with two handles simultaneously. That seems like a great modern adaptation, but it's still, I don't know, it doesn't scratch the itch for me. It doesn't tell me why the Dominies chose this why they kept on with this vice, why they abandoned the leg vice for it when they could have had any vice they wanted. The mystery continues, and honestly, I think I just have to live with it for a while, which is fine. I own two workbenches. I'm just going to leave the twin screw on there and keep using it. Now, at this point in the video, I would usually say, hey, I've got plans and you can get them, but the twin screw vice, it just, it seems too simple to have a set of plans all on its own. So I'll build another vintage vise sometime in the future, and I'll put the two plans together and offer them for the same low price. Speaking of plans, you might be interested in building my advanced shooting board or the turning saw that you saw in this video. I have links to both of those plans down in the description, and all of my plans are very reasonably priced. When I designed my turning saw, I meant it for like, you know, one inch thick wood, kind of standard cabinet work. And when I was sawing the holes in the big two inch jaws of this vise, well, when I got just done with the last one, I snapped one of the pins on the saw. Now, this is fine if you're doing regular, like, one inch thick work, but if you want your saw to do really nice curves in big thick work, you're going to need to use larger hardware for those pins. I have already updated the plans to specify some larger metal pieces, and I'm going to have some really exciting news about turning saws and hardware and how you can make your own a bunch of really great things just in the new year. So you might want to hit that bell icon to make sure you're always staying up to date on the latest news. And speaking of news, there's one group of people who are never surprised by anything they hear in this channel. It's my patrons on Patreon. If it's a video, they've already seen it. If it's a piece of writing, they've already read it. And if it's new, they've already heard about it. Because I tell them about everything first. If you'd like to be one of those people, go on over to patreon.com slash rexkruger and check out all the early access, sneak peeks, behind the scenes, and other rewards that I give to the people who make this stuff possible. And listen, I don't know about you all, but this holiday season is, I mean, whew, it's really something. It's, it hasn't been easy. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's doing well. Take, take care of yourselves. Thanks for watching.